Okay guys, welcome back. Hope that all of you are doing well. Now, last time I forgot to mention one big change that has been made in the last balance patch. The capital neutralizers have been improved. They used to have a very small effect on sub capitals, basically a non-existent effect on frigates and cruisers. They started to have an effect on big ships like Bella cruisers and Bella ships. But now, with the last balance patch, the capital neutralizers have been vastly improved, and now they are much, much more lethal. And today I will show you the new build that I have on the revelation. The change is so good that now I have one or two neutralizers on the ship at at all time and they have been they will be mostly used for defense so uh, this is the build that i have on this ship dual neutralizers dual webs everything else remains about the same i think last time i forgot to add the thermal circulation implant so the resistance wasn't as good as it is now but overall this is the one of the tankiest revelations in the game everything else that i have on the ship is roughly the same it does look different when you have dual neutralizers this is basically a mini chemosh now with the with the neutralizers although the true blood raider the true blood raider Dreadnought will be much, much more lethal than uh, than this ship. The active stats are also, generally speaking, very good. 90%, 94, 93, and 92%. Tank uh, those Apocalypse Strikers a couple days ago. Basically, I was tanking them effortlessly, not even using a full-on tank build. And with the damage control, the numbers will, of course, be significantly higher, which, you know, is to be is to be expected. Uh, although I haven't had the Docking request I haven't accepted. really had a real situation where the damage control uh, did its thing. Although it's nice to absorb as much damage as possible, so that the armor repairs can easily recover all that lost armor. Very good in siege battles and very good when you get hot dropped. Now let me quickly demonstrate the effects on the neutralizer. Now in theory one neutralizer, one capital neutralizer will be enough to kill the capacitor of a frigate. Even at zero. That's how much they have been improved. So the optimal range is 44, the accuracy valve is about 22. So, yeah, uh, before the patch, the Daredevil wouldn't feel the neutralizer, but now, well, we're about to find out what will happen to the, to the capacitor of that little ship. Now, it's not going to be, obviously not going to be full effect. After all, it's orbiting at zero, and it still has that capital penalty. So, the neutralizer will have about 20%, 30% maximum effect. And I have 315 Gudru capacitor on this Daredevil. So, and of course my uh, emulator is broken, so yeah, can't open the small window on screen, so I have to scroll it down. And yes, it killed the whole capacitor in one cycle. One percent, three percent. It's it's charging, but it went from 100 to zero real fast. So now I'll wait for the second cycle to kick in so that I show you that there is nothing else impact in the in the capacitor of the Daredevil because there is there are some players who believe that that my revelation is somehow fake <laughs> although I haven't had a good explanation on how uh how I managed to to fake this uh, revelation because I use this ship almost every day and this ship has killed 
2,443 ships, so yeah. Uh, not really sure how how it can be fake, but yeah. The Nuto ladders are quite cheap now, so I recommend that you uh, get them before they start becoming a lot more expensive because they start to be really, really lethal for PvP. And well, uh, now I feel much safer with a neutralizer on my ship. Small ships are no longer going to be a threat. I just kill their capacitor and then I web and kill them because I mostly use the, the high angle turrets. So, uh, I also under had some uh, some salt claiming that my tank somehow uh, is is hacked. There is a guy that claims how uh, I paid the developers to make my revelation immortal. Basically, they think that uh, I paid the developers attack. to give me 99% resistance. Not like you know I show the stats of the ship. Not like. I've been doing uh, the build videos on this ship for like, I don't know, a year now or something. Everything over here is transparent and I think all of you know what modules and what rigs I have on this ship. The only thing that will be changed uh, in the future, I will probably pull out the integrations on this ship because those integrations will probably go into the Under attack. faction dreadnought We're after all attack. this ship will be used as material for the chemish although i'm still i still haven't really decided on that i'm always on the fence about this uh, about about using this ship as material because this ship is currently I think in the story disc it's probably number one because with the revelation I mostly destroyed big ships, faction ships, faction cruisers, faction battleships, normal battleships because those are the ships that I usually kill, get to shoot at before uh, before they die. Anything smaller gets killed by my friends or since I am mostly camping solo nowadays with this ship with rare occasions when when the crew decides to join because recently we also had a CTA fleet attack. coming towards this location and everyone wants a piece of that of course then everyone comes in and joins on the party but most of the time it's only only me at the gate with my alt and with a bubble but all of my friends here are using some pretty good implants and really good ships with high DPS. There is a barrage implant on the Neglifar, which does a lot of DPS, but uh, the tank on this thing holds really well. And most of my friends are also using the Focus or Pulse Crystal, so... So yeah, there is a lot of DPS on this ship and I effortlessly can tank that all day long. Well this raven decided attack. to come at the wrong moment and yeah that was quick. That's the first kill of the day. Although still not officially started with the with the PvP part yet but yeah first target the hard million raven and I think this is the yeah it looks like a CTA build and it looks like the CTA fleet is on the way. Warp drive active. Now usually I like to start with something a little bit different. And I'll start with the uh, with the Macarial. Currently the CTA fleet is still on the way, so I have time to go with the Macarial to blow something up. And well, our first, well, technically first target is a rattlesnake that is already in the hole and this rattlesnake did try to avoid us but attack. eventually they got caught and they got destroyed. 
Okay, well, a pretty good start today. We're under attack. And also on, on the very start, there was a cover tops. I think there was a bellicose, two cover tops that returned to gate. Very sneaky. Could be a final. Let me warp out to the asteroid belt so that I can show you the kill. Five point four billion is rattlesnake. Very interesting. These things used to be cheap, but now they are expensive again. Not really sure what is going on there, but okay, I'm not going to complain. A good kill is a good kill. Next target, an Apocalypse Striker. Also part of the... Also part of the CTA fleet. You will see, based on the builds, it's a very specific build for fleets. Now what are they doing here? I have no idea. I think their rally point... Actually no. I think this is a support fleet for the for the CTA. The main fleet is already in in action and this little system just so happens to be right in between the big fight and And I guess their closest position. 3.2 billion isk Apocalypse Striker. It's also red, so yeah. Going to get paid for blowing up this little boat. And again, a obvious fleet build. Next we have a Maelstorm. Also seems to be part of the previous Also seems to be part of the support fleet. Although, I, I, I have to say, if the autopilot is pushing your fleet through our system, don't go. Take the longer route, because I usually have intel when there is a big fight happening, and I usually have very accurate intel on what type of ships to expect and how many ships to expect, because I have friends on all sides and they're good friends and they will tell me when to expect company and in this case I was told that there's going to be juicy ships flying, flying through our home system because they happen to be the shortest route to the battlefield and well you know in the classic classic fashion I will undock the revelation and I will wait for the ships to come in to blow them up because that's what I do I like to blow up ships, it is the thing that I am really good at in this game. And well, it did pay off so far, I mean, we received so much, so much ISK doing PvP that, that I really can't complain. And even a nightmare popped in, okay, nice. Let's get the Nightmare. Now the Nightmare will be a bit more tanky. I'm actually very curious to see what type of... What type of build the Nightmare has. Since it is a CTA build, it's 100% going to be a CTA build. Seems like they have a lot of shields. As expected, after all, Nightmare is basically a a big guardian. Now they are into armor. And also a red knight, which means we will get paid for blowing it up. 
they are into hole. I accidentally clicked on the on the weapon again. I'm not really sure why I did that, but it happens. And uh, nightmare has been destroyed. Now in this case, I think I should swap to the main turrets. The main turrets seem to be the best option, especially when I have a fleet of my own. 5.4 billion and this nightmare... Okay, let's inspect the build. Okay, full tank, triple mirror field, shield field modules, and missiles. Well, that's interesting. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter what weapons they use because their goal is to keep everyone alive and they, their goal is to have the capacity for as long as possible but I'm fairly sure I've seen better CTA builds out there next target this is a Raven Striker also part of the of the fleet and also got destroyed and also was red so we get we get some very nice ease for blowing up these ships and again uh, we we shoot at everything. Can be one. We, we don't have. We don't pick sides in the war. We, we shoot. Uh, we shoot everyone that passes through. Basically, if it's a neutral ship, it gets blown up. That's basically how it goes. Because I know someone. Uh, we have been. Uh, what well, we have been accused of interfering with the war, and that's kind of hilarious because uh, we blow up both sides without you know, caring, <laughs> that's basically how it works, but I find it pretty funny when a salty guy just straight out accused us of interfering with the war, meanwhile we just blow up anything that just comes close to us. Kinda weird that they think that, but I don't know. Next we have a rock, also headed towards the CTA, and well, Bad, bad idea to come through our home system. And I find it funny because we actually expected them to to fly uh, in a group. But it looks like they were headed towards the battlefield one by one. Which is a horrific mistake. Never fly one by one because that way you will be picked, picked off one by one. Always fly in a group, that way your chances of survival a gate camp are higher, although yeah, this this gate camp is a little bit different, but you know, uh, I think most of you understand what I'm trying to say, so never go one by one, always fly in a group. If you go one by one, you can easily get picked off one by one, if there are obstacles on the way. And again, looks like a CTA built. The rock is quite the popular ship for for that purpose. And this is not the first time that there is a CTA fleet flying through. Uh, last time when it happened, I was mostly solo and I basically stopped an entire fleet from jumping through the gate. It was so crazy that after blowing up like 50 ships that just came into the bubble one by one, uh, I decided to just dock because I, I thought at the time that I pushed my luck to the, to the limit. Everything that came got destroyed and eventually uh, I decided to dock because yeah I had plenty of kills, was enough. I felt that it was time to, to go sleep and I eventually uh, did go sleep. And it turns out the main fleet did not go through uh, our gate at the time. They actually went the other longer route so I could have I could have been on the gate longer but you know uh, a good instinct when, when the when your instinct tells you to, to, to bail out bail out because your instinct is going to probably be correct. Well, that uh, was a surprising Algos assault that popped in out of nowhere. 
and looks like was probably part of the fleet as well. Now all, all ships that you see here are ships that have been going to the battlefield. The battlefield where that... Uh, not Vazago. The villain, yeah, the villain was uh, the, the main, the biggest target that got destroyed uh, in the in that battle. It was one of the largest capital ship battles in the game. And all of these ships were going towards that battle, but unfortunately uh, they just picked the, the wrong route. And we have another Typhoon. All of these ships again are CTA built build for a CTA, all of them have a very specific build and it's very interesting to inspect all the different doctrine builds for all the different alliances and corps. I have seen the doctrine builds on all of the corps and alliances that are currently in the game. Some of which I, some of these builds I actually like quite a bit because they seem to be they, they seem to be interesting. Uh, definitely some of them have that outside of the box thinking and I like that a lot. Meanwhile some of the other builds I don't really like because they don't really work well with the ship. But most are pretty, pretty decent and pretty okay. As long as they don't slap autocans on on an Alasnik, I think I'll be good. And a more Guardian popped in, also was going somewhere. This is basically what happens when you are at the right place at the right time. You basically get free targets to shoot at works really well if you have friends at, at your side because the fun just gets much better when when you can share it with your friends and again that was a that was an okay build oh now the logistic ships are headed towards the battlefield okay Couldn't have found a better place to call home, like honestly. I had a chance to go into Fontaine, I had the, the chance to return to Catch, I had a chance to go north. I was basically invited to go uh, in all the big... in all the big alliances or big coalitions, but... I liked, I, I always liked it over here. I like the chill and relaxed pirate life. It is what suits me the best, I think. And I could probably, you know, sometimes I do miss the, the, the big alliance or big corp life because I like big bells. I used to participate in a lot of big battles in the past and I enjoyed them but I feel like this uh, this system, this corporation that, that I'm currently at, the pirate life, the mercenary life I think that uh, in this game that suits me the best because it's just so relaxing I can just enjoy the game and you know, uh, doesn't waste too much time because I can basically leave the ship AFK on the gate for a while and and just basically go do something uh, something else. When a target pops in, I kill a target, and when the target is dead, well, I just return to what I was doing. And this is why this is such a relaxing thing that you can do. Basically active in the game and active in real life where we can where you have to do some other things. 
And you don't have to worry about stabs. Stabs don't really work in a setup like this. And I even found we even found a solution to those uh, to those annoying wedge core ships. That's where the neutralizers kick in. I guess one balance pack will definitely the fact that I can now kill the capacitors of those annoying ships with those annoying cores. They can have that speed bonus, but they will not have any cap to use an afterburn or a mic warp drive, so I can easily catch them. And if I if I sound a little bit tired, well, I already I already told you, I I'm feeling a little bit sick because I I ate something bad and now, yeah, uh, let's say I, I don't feel I don't feel that good, but I'm getting better slowly. Will be will be much better in in the next couple hours. I b I believe that's usually how it goes when I eat something bad because I don't know. Uh, the the foods. Only well, it's not the foods. I think I just ate something that I am allergic to, or, or something similar. So, so yeah, I have to be careful. And it's like 2:45 a.m. and it's late. I was up the whole day. That also has an impact on on my voice. So my apologies if I sound a little bit a little bit weird today. This was a Gnosis, a very cheap one, although still quite expensive. Now, since since my alt doesn't have Omega yet, as you all know, Omega costs quite a bit now since the the flex price been off the charts high. High as a kite, as they say. Although the price did go down, it was like 4.5 million. Now it's actually last time I checked, it was like 3.9 uh, after the patch, and now it's 3.8 million. Oh, okay, well the price of the plex definitely, definitely going down, and I'm very, I'm, I'm very glad that that's the case because I was getting. I was getting a little bit worried, but seems like the developers have have kept their promise to reduce the flex price. And this is a golden nanocore. Lovely. You don't know how much it makes me happy to see a destroyed ship with a golden watch Corneo core those cores are horrible how much they destroy the balance in this game well looks like my alt account is not working so I just have to blast the daredevil in the old school way and that always works high angle turrets have good tracking and they work really really well 304 million a medium extended okay I like this build it reminds me of my own build that's this is how I fly my own daredevil just without the uh, railgun another succubus now you might be wondering where are my neutralizers well I haven't had them equipped at the time of recording this by the time I equipped them actually I don't know when I started to use the neutralizers it's st it started I started very very recently couple couple days ago I think actually no my my bad uh, right after the patch that's when I started to use them so 
So this has been recorded not following a exact pattern. I just added the the juiciest ships at the start and then the last juicy ships as it goes on. Sometimes it's quite mixed, so yeah. It all depends on the on the time where What is this? You Well that guy is salty I guess. Oh well. Let's go to the next one. What is this? I have we have destroyed like five faction frigates in a row. It is faction frigate day, I guess. Very nice. I mean I'm not complaining, don't get me wrong. Any faction ship is a a good faction ship. And the Daredevil has been destroyed. Okay. Well, both are very, very nice ships. It adds to the total East destroyed, so yeah, it's still pretty solid. Next, we have a Phantasm. My friend is using neutralizers, and uh, my friends did do a lot of testing with them. And I'm thinking, are the developers going to change the neutralizers again? Now, personally, if you ask me, I, b I believe that they will change. I just have the feeling that they will change the neutralizers again. Although, at the same time, they might keep it the same. Because now the neutralizers can actually counter those those insane nano cores that shouldn't have been released in the in the game in the first place if you ask me but now now we have a good option uh, against those nano cores and i'm honestly kind of okay with that Although personally, I would love to see those nanocores removed, but you know, that's just me. I would love if the nanocores would just vanish from the game. All of them would be would be, I guess, a bit more balanced. And the implants as well. If the implants get changed to have a passive-only effect, I'd be totally fine with that. And if the nano cores also had, you know, a small effect. Although honestly, when when you look at the at the big picture, the first nano cores that have been added to the game haven't been, you know, that that broken. It's the new nano cores that have those crazy special traits or something, like the voyage core or the porcelain core, or the glacier core. They those cores are the cores that that I don't uh, like at all. And the stab cores. Stabs also have have ruined a lot of things in the game, but... But in a bubble, I don't have to worry about stabs. Stabs don't work in bubbles, thankfully. Okay, sorry for the uh, weird silence. My back started to hurt for some weird reason, so 
I had to take a pause. Back pain sometimes can be can be quite nasty. Okay, well, uh, that was a that was an oracle. Two hundred forty-seven million. Okay, not bad. Next, we have another daredevil. We have killed so many faction frigates today. It was insane. And next we have a Cinnabal. I am yours. That's a lovely name. Well. And there goes the capacitor. My friends, capital neutralizers have killed the capacitor of the Cinnabal and well they tried to burn out. But unfortunately, they lost the capacitor before they could burn out, and and their ship got destroyed. This is why I like the capital neutralizers now. They became really good. And this is this is my build that I run on uh, on my own symbol, but very close to it. Not all the modules are the same, but yeah, this is basically how I fly my symbol, and that was a pretty good, pretty good. PvP build. I, I, I like it. I like it built on the symbol a lot. It's really good. Next target, we have a worm. I, I think we killed like all faction frigates today except the Astero and Garmor. Everything else has been killed today. And I looted and I got the kill. Let's take a look at the kill. 294 million. They had a... Uh, well, this looks like a PvP worm. Okay, interesting. We have a Myrmidon. Already wept. Their capacitor is probably dead. This ship does feel like the Balgor now with the neutralizers. Overall, honestly, a very, very interesting, uh, very interesting change with the neutralizers because now this is how I would feel if I were to be, let's say, flying a Chemosh. This is how the Chemosh feels, and it feels awesome. Honestly, uh, would be a very, very fun to fly ship. And the last target for today, we have a Cyclone, because, you know... I used to destroy so many Cyclones, that I stopped showing them on the, on the videos. But let's just finish the video with a Cyclone, because why not? For the... well, for the, for the memes, I guess. I was a pretty solid Cyclone kill, by the way. Overall, uh, was a pretty good run today. We had a very good time waiting for that CTA fleet, and I would say our intercept tactic was quite successful. We assembled really quickly in order to uh, wait for the fleet. We actually, I already told you, I expected the fleet to move together, so that's why we assembled our own fleet to basically wait for them but in the end it turns out that they were going one by one so um, that is one thing that I did did not see coming I thought that they they would be a bit more serious and that they would be you know flying uh, in a proper fleet but uh, unfortunately they they were going one by one so uh, we got to blow their ships up one by one and was pretty successful again. It was really fun. We made a lot of ISK. It was quite relaxing as well. I was able to uh, to chill and enjoy the game again for a change. So uh, with that being said, hope that you guys enjoyed this very chill run today. Overall, again, uh, was quite successful. If you would like to support me, feel free to like and subscribe. It helps a lot. And with that being said, stay safe, fly safe, and I'll see you next time.